The management of cavity wounds and fistulae can often be a challenge for healthcare professionals. It can be difficult to assess, find and accurately measure these wounds and they can be misidentified, which can lead to inappropriate management and delayed healing. There is also a lack of a standardized definition of cavity wounds. For example, a cavity wound can be present in different areas of the body. The depth of a wound is not necessarily a sign of severity. For example, a shallow wound may involve all three layers of the skin and have a positive probe to bone test Jane is not only treating Mary's wound, she is also visiting other patients, one of whom is Peter, a male patient with a pressure ulcer or injury on his sacrum, which is a deep cavity. We need to be aware that a cavity can occur in other chronic wounds as well. For example, leg ulcers, diabetic foot ulcers, and malignant fungating wounds. Cavities can also occur in other wound types including traumatic wounds such as gunshots, surgical wounds, as well as after an abscess drainage and excision. It's important to ensure a thorough examination is made of the wound, looking for other dead spaces, because sometimes cavities or dehist wounds are associated with tunneling and undermining. Cavities and fistulae need to be carefully assessed but the hidden nature of some can present practical challenges in terms of visualizing the wound bed. The condition can also be very problematic to measure and document in an accurate and reproducible way, especially if undermining, tunneling or bridging is present. As for all wounds, a comprehensive holistic assessment of Peter and his wound is the first step before creating an individualized wound management care plan for the patient. When Jane visits Peter for the dressing change of his pressure ulcer, she needs to assess the cavity filler and the secondary dressing upon removal to evaluate the amount, type, and the color of the exudate. After cleansing and debridement of the yellow slough in the wound cavity, she can more easily assess the wound bed and the depth to document and follow the wound healing progress. Cavity wound cleansing may involve irrigation in order to clear out dressing debris and tissue from the bottom of the cavity itself. Documentation of the appearance of the cavity and any fistula found, as well as the presence of undermining or tunneling measurements, can be done using the face of a clock for position, with the depth measured in centimeters. It is important to note where sinus or fistulae are of an unknown depth or origin that the patient may need referral to a specialist in order to have the true extent of the wound explored prior to treatment commencing. Cavities often need to be debrided in addition to exudate management. It is important to manage any signs of wound infection or biofilm. Odour can also be a challenge. The patient should also be an integral part of the assessment, if possible, and their ability and willingness to participate in their management should be considered. We should also educate and instruct both caregivers and patients on techniques they can use to reduce pressure and keep weight off the area as much as possible. This may involve regular position changes, positioning devices and the use of offloading devices. Before Jane treats the cavity or fistula, she will take the following into consideration. The need for wound cleansing, wound debridement, providing periwound skin protection, maintaining a moist wound environment with an appropriate dressing material that can absorb, retain and control exudate. It can be, for example, a superabsorbent dressing a cavity filler together with secondary dressing or devices such as negative pressure wound therapy. Ensuring pain-free application and removal of dressings. Selecting a dressing that doesn't disintegrate because in cavities, tunneling and fistulae, it can be impossible to see the wound bed properly and it's important to guarantee that we don't leave debris inside the space and the filler dressing comes out in one piece. 
using cavity dressing that conforms to the wound bed and has the ability to transport exudate to the secondary dressing. This will prevent and eliminate dead space and pooling of exudate within the cavity, which can increase the risk of wound infection. Don't pack the wound, fill it. Cavity wounds should be gently filled, not packed, meaning that the dressing should not be forced in too tight, as this can cause a plug that will discourage free draining of exudate and can also cause the local blood flow to be restricted and even hinder granulation. Remember that a cavity wound will heal by filling with granulation tissue from the base upwards. Consider using negative pressure wound therapy, NPWT, if the cavity is not manageable with advanced wound dressings. We need to be aware that cavity wounds are often associated with a high risk of infection, so we need to be mindful of this when examining this kind of wound. Jane also checks for the presence of bone and the risk of osteomyelitis, infection in the bone, when there is a positive probe to bone test. The presence of tendons, joint and blood vessels that always need to be kept moist and protected with very large cavities, for example at pressure ulcers or injuries at sacrum, reconstruction surgery can be the best solution. Jane also thinks about the importance of recording the number of dressings used in cavities if the depth or tunneling in the trajectory cannot be viewed. This is to ensure that no dressings are retained within the cavity or inside. To secure that the wound edges do not close before the cavity is healed from the base upward, she also ensures that the end of the cavity filler protrudes out from the opening and is secured on the peri wound. This can also assist with the removal of the cavity filler when the cavity or fistula has only a small opening. So now we have learned about cavities and fistulae, as well as all the other wound healing essentials. Mary's wound healing journey is almost complete. Let's take the last step and explore the final essential, evaluating wound management and preventing recurrence through patient engagement.